Okay, first things first, you go ahead and uh, get your Epic Games launcher going. I'm going to do a brand new project in 4.20.3. Go ahead and launch that. And give it a minute here. Don't mind this, this is just the uh, Steam VR startup. We're not going to be using it. I'm going to do a new project. Give it something you'll remember. And name mine Tutorial 1A. Gonna pick a third person template. And pick create project. First time always takes forever to start up. And I'm going to be fast forwarding through various segments here. Okay. Now, the very first thing I'm going to have you do is add in something for the marketplace. Now, as far as marketplace items go, I usually don't buy them very often, but there is one that I use for pretty much everything. It's the Rifle Anim Set Pro. It's not perfect, but like I said, uh, when I'm prototyping anything, that's what I use. Go ahead and add that to pro Project after you purchased it. I already got it a long time ago. Uh, we have our project, which is tutorial 1A, and just add it from there. You don't have to do it from the marketplace. You could be in the library after you've purchased it. Come down here into the vault, just like any of these other assets, and add them on in there. Okay, clicking on this icon here will drop down everything, and you can see that we have the Rifle Anim Set Pro. And what it is, it's just all the various animations you can see here when he's running around. This is pretty much what you get out of the box. There's a few other add-ons, but what we need to do is um, we're going to be checking replication here. So we want to have uh, rifle movements because we're going to be doing a shooter. So, let me go ahead and give you a demonstration of what the base project is. And we're going to set it so it pops up in two different windows. This is your server. This is your client. Now out of the box, you'll notice right away uh, we have replication, which means both the client and the server are seeing each other move around, no problem. Um, that's because replication has already been programmed in through the movement component. I'll explain more about that later, but basically all the hard work's already been done. If you try to go in and add animations uh, you'll see them first player, but multiplayer, it, it's not going to be in there. You're not going to see them moving around, and I'm going to show you that in a, uh, here in just a second. So, what we need to do, the Rifle Anim Set Pro, and the, let's see here. Okay, so this is why I use An Rifle Anim Set Pro. I don't, you know, obviously I'm not making any money off this or anything. It's just a great place to start. They already made these blend spaces for you. And what blend spaces are, I'll open it up here. It's just a collection of all the animations put together in a nice, convenient way so that when you move forward or walk right, when you give those commands, the animations will be blended for you. You can make your own blend space. This isn't anything special. But the animations within it are. So basically, this is a collection. This blend space is a collection of all these individual animations put together. And there's a million tutorials. You can look this up. 
uh, all day long and see all the different uh, ones. There's millions of them out there. But what we're focusing it on now is uh, replication. And I could explain what replication it is, but it's just easier to show you. Uh, we need to get rid of this UE4 mannequin. And what this is, when you get Rifle Anim Set Pro, it comes with the UE4 mannequin. We already have one. It's the project's defaulted with one. There it is right there. So we don't need this one. It's, it'll make it really confusing if we have it in there. So we're going to go ahead and click this, control click these, press delete. And all this is saying is that all of these animations are tied to that mannequin. And we're going to apply them to the mannequin that came in the uh, project when we first got it. So delete those. We don't need them. Okay, back to our blend spaces within Rifle Anim Set Pro. You notice it went black there. That's basically saying it doesn't have it doesn't have a character assigned to it. So we click on it, and then this pops up. Would you like to choose a new one? Uh, yes, we would. Okay, and the default one um, is actually called UE4 Mannequin Skeleton. And you know to make this easier because. If you keep adding in sets, you're going to have a million UE4 mannequin skeletons. It gets really, really, really confusing. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. I'm going to show you a quick way to go ahead and figure out what your default uh, skeleton is. So just click on here. Go to Edit Blueprint right over here in the corner. Okay, and your blueprint is basically your class if you're familiar with C++. I'll get into more detail on that. Uh, later on but I'm just trying to get you the basics here click on mesh and when you click on mesh the skeletal mesh will pop up here and that's the one he's using there are millions of these uh, well there can be if you've added in tons of different projects anyway what I do press F2 and I default I, I add a prefix on here so I can remember what they all are so I put my first name at the beginning of each of these. Now the first one's your skeleton. This is your physics asset. And this is the actual skeleton, which is extremely confusing if you're first starting out. But just do what I'm doing right now, and it'll make a lot more sense. Okay, so we have the skeletons prefixed here to aid in fixing any confusion. And then we're going to go back to our animation. So if you lose your place over here, just const just click on this guy, okay? Let's say he's not highlighted. Click on him, go to Edit Blueprint, Open Blueprint Editor, then click on the mesh right here. And then you can see your animations over here and your skeleton and everything like that that we need. Okay, where were we? Rifle Anim Set Pro, Animations, Blend Spaces. Okay, he still wants to know who he is, so we just click on him right here. Do you want to sign a new uh, uh, skeleton? Of course we do. And then right there, boom. See? Mark. So, since I prefixed it with Mark, it makes it real easy. I always know to come to this one. And then retarget. And what retarget did, it took all of these animations and assign them to this skeleton right here all right and then we're going to save all okay so let's open up our third person character if you don't remember where that was again click on the guy edit blueprint open blueprint editor makes it real easy this compiles got a question mark just push it save it save all Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get the values from when we push move forward and push move right. And we're going to assign that to that blend space to make the blend space move. Okay, if you, if you don't, he'll just stand still. So basically just right click here, promote to a variable. You can name it whatever you want. Move forward. Okay, and what that did, it made a float value. Anytime you see green in Unreal, it's just a float. And what a float is, it's a numerical value 
that could be um, anything you want. It could be one, two, three, four, but it could also be 1.2, 1.3, 1. 1. 1.4. Uh, it could be decimal values. This is opposed to an integer or an int, which is a solid one, two, three, four, five. So this can spit out all the values between whole numbers, if that makes sense. Um, and that's all it is. It's nothing special at all. That's all that value holds. It doesn't do anything magical. That's just a variable. Right here is a function. It's significantly more complex, uh, and we'll get into that later on. But what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. So basically, when you push move forward on your keyboard, it's sending uh, information out. It's saying, fire this right here. And we're going to do the same thing for when we move right. And I just press F2 over here. Okay. And then we got our move right. Got our move forward or move right. Now, we want to take this information and we want to move it over to where our animations are. Basically, this whole thing here, this whole class here, is a container that holds this guy. All his information is held right here. All right, so we wanna to get to his animations. So to quickly find where that's at, we click on the mesh, and a mesh is the physical representative here, the thing that we changed our name right here. We wanna to get to what drives all his animations, and that's the animation blueprint. A quick way to find it, push this little magnifying glass, and boom. Now this is gonna be all of his animation information. Double click on that. And we're in the middle of everything here. And come over here, and this can be a little confusing, but click on event graph. Double click it, this will all pop up. Don't worry about un trying to understand this. All that matters right now is getting this variable right here or this function okay so this is gonna get the owner try get pawn owner so and actually to make this a little more clear on what this does I'm gonna go back to our third person character okay remember this thing that houses all this information push the magnifying glass and that takes you to its location here. If you got totally lost on what I did, just did, just click on the character, edit blueprint, open blueprint editor, click the magnifying glass, and you're over here. So we're going to rename it so it's not confusing and just call it mark third person character. Okay, by prefixing it, it limits the options as to what will pop up, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, now let's go back to his animations. Click on the character. Edit Blueprint, Open Blueprint Editor, click Mesh, go to the Anim class. Let's look at this back to where we were. I'm just showing you quick ways to get around because you can get lost really quick. Double click on the third person animation. Okay, so try get pawn owner. Watch this. Drag off of here. I'm just holding and clicking. Drag off of here. Type in cast, C-A-S-T. Okay, and then you can space two, and you're starting to see where our options are. And we got all this stuff, but look, mark. I'm going to do that again because that just clicked. I didn't mean it to. Okay, see it that right there? Cast to mark third person character. When I went and renamed it, I made it way easier to tell what I'm going to need. And what is this doing? Okay, well, when this function is called, it's saying try get pawn owner, it's trying to get the owner of this character, of these animations, okay, of this animation blueprint. And so the owner is this guy, but we gotta tell it that. It doesn't, it has no idea who it's supposed to be driving. So basically to connect these two things, this is the animation blueprint and the actual character blueprint, this is the way to link them in short, okay? So this function will return that, but it doesn't know exactly what it's supposed to be. So it comes over here and it calls it to the third person character. Okay. Now to make the program actually run together, you got to, it follows, as you can see, it's already flowing out of here. It's 
following the white, okay? So if you follow this trail down here, it calculates speed and all that, we're gonna connect it right over here. You could connect it earlier on, but just to keep things as least confusing as possible, we're gonna do it this way. So why did we do this? Well, we cast it a third, to the third person character because we need to get information out of the third person character. If you remember, in the third person character, and I'm just clicking over here to event graph, we were at the viewport. Viewport On the event graph, this is where we made move forward and move right. And if you remember, this input, this is directly your keyboard, okay? And you're like, well, what's my move forward and what's my move right? Well, we can, we can figure that out. I can show you that real quick. So go over to the main screen over here. If you click in settings, project settings, I know I'm going a little fast, but this is just to give you an idea. Press input, action mappings, axis mappings, and you know, there's your move forward. And here, look at that. W, S, up and down. You wanna see what move right is? A, D, it's already set up to handle gamepad input. So that's where that's coming from, okay? Back to your third person character, move forward, move right. Those are where those just defined. You can change them up however you want, okay? Now we'll go over to our animation. So you remember those two variables we wanted. To get those, we just simply type get, move forward, okay? We're going to get, move right, all right? So we have these two, these two variables. All right, now what? So to send this information through, we need to make a move forward and a move right for the animation blueprint. So to do that, just right click on these little holes right here, promote to a variable, and we'll name that one the same name. Move forward, right click here, move right. All right, and then we connect them to the white because that just think of signal flow. It's going through over here. These little lines, this is where the data is moving around. Okay, think of data flowing through these. But the only way to actually make them happen is to have the white go through it. Okay, so now we have move forward, move right. It's in the animation. It knows that it's getting that data, but now we have to actually assign it to the animations. So to do that, go into the anim graph, double click it. Okay, you'll see this default state machine. Double click it. All right, and this is our, uh, I don't even know what they call this, but this is what we're in right now. You can see it's highlighted. Double click it. Okay, and if you double click this third person idle run and press shift, and move your cursor around here, you're basically increasing his speed and you're seeing how he reacts to it. Okay. Now we're gonna replace that with our rifle anim set ro uh, pro blend space. Okay, so we're back here at our animations. Okay. So to get to that, that blend space we originally, I should have named it to make it easier to remember where it's at, but if you go to Asset Browser, the blend spaces are gonna pop up with this little orange color. So that's the one we were just looking at. Classic Rifle Strafe Movement. If you click that and just drag it into here, boom, you see right there. So what we're gonna do is assign that to the animation flow, moving right here. Okay, I'm gonna click Compile and he's already in his stance. Now the thing is, he's in his stance, and he looks all good, but if we were to tell him to move forward or move right, he wouldn't go anywhere because these aren't actually hooked up yet. We need to get the data over there. The quick way to do that is to move forward, just click it, bring it over, drop it, and we're gonna get it. We're not at setting any information. We're just getting the information. So move forward, goes right there, move right, grab it, Drop it. Okay. And once again, these names, they don't matter. This could be A, this could be B, this could be C, this could be D. They don't matter. 
we simply name the, these are these float values we were talking about. We name them for convenience. That's it. And nothing more than that. I'm just compiling it. Every time you do something, you need to compile. And then I do a little save all. Okay, and if we look, our character is moving around very strangely. But as you can see, I'm just moving the uh, WASD keys. His animations are in and they're moving. But we got major problems. Uh, the first one is... If you look on the right screen, he's just gliding. On the left screen, he's actually using the animations. This, my friends, is what replication is, okay? Or the lack thereof. We have no replication um, on the animations. And this is why multiplayer games are so difficult to program. Uh, you have to decide what information is gonna go to the server, okay? The server is over here on the left, the client's on the right. Now, if I'm playing as the client, and I'm getting that, inf how I know this is a client, if you look up here, game preview client one, server's over here. So we're going to click the uh, client. Okay, you can tell he's not even replicated. So the default one they give you, the initial movements are replicated. But anything you do additional to that, you have to replicate. So let's get this guy to look right. Let's get his information, uh, get his data going uh, onto the server. Okay, first I want to fix the really annoying uh, way he's moving around. So, if you, let me just check this real quick. Okay, so if you notice, things change when you click over here, all right? So just go over to his character movement component. Orient rotation to movement, we don't want to have that on. So we're going to turn that off. And then we want to go ahead and use the controller desired rotation. And the quick, see, if I didn't have this in here, look, look at this. It's a mess. Make sure you have your character movement highlighted and click or type in use controller desired rotation okay and you're gonna see what that does here right now save okay now look what we see now we'll add an anim animation to move his legs around so he doesn't look all you know like he's gliding but look at this okay now he's starting to move more around like uh like a third person shooter okay you notice he's jumping all around doing all that sorts of weird stuff Okay, let's fix that. That's just a simple animation setting. Go into your um, third person animation blueprint. That uh, this blend space here. Okay. What we need to do is set his interpolation speed. Interpolation speed. I usually set it at, I don't know. Five. You got to just fool around with this, see what you like. Press five, tab, save. Come back over here, save all. Okay. And now look at that. Look at how smooth he's moving. That's what you want. Still not replicated. See, he's still gliding along like nothing ever happened. But at least we won't drive ourselves crazy. And if you got lost there, if you remember where that, that's at, go into Rifle Anim Set Pro into your uh, blend spaces okay it's right there and we should name this really so we don't lose it or we don't we don't have to search for it so much type in mark you can put your first name there whatever you want click enter that way you remember what it is since you're using it so much okay so let's get on to the whole reason of this video replication so these move forward and move right variables we need to make them so They'll send the data to the server. So first we gotta tell them to replicate. Okay, oops, see, this is gonna be a problem if you're just starting out. You click on this and you're like, I don't have anything. That's because you got your details, you have something up here. So just click that off. Go under replication, click replicated. Click over here, click replicated, okay? Click compile, save. 
I wish that was all we had to do, but there's more. The variables got to be replicated, plus we have to make a function um, tell the server that this information, where it needs to go, or at what time in the signal does it need to go. So to do that, just click, right click, type in custom, add custom event, right? You name, name it whatever you want. Um, move forward to server, that makes sense to me. And then custom event, move right to server, because we're gonna have to move both of them, right? Okay, and I always forget this, so I do this up front. Click it, set it to run on server, and make sure it's reliable. Reliable means it will always fire. If it wasn't reliable, if the system gets bogged down, it's it probably won't fire. Okay. That's not all. Once you've created the, these, you're going to have more options that'll pop up when you right click. Watch this. Right click, move forward to server. Okay, this wouldn't ex have existed had I not just created what I did, and it seems completely backwards. But when you put this here, it triggers this one up here to fire, okay? So I, I made this, but this is what's gonna call it. Now watch this. You put it right here, and the signal flow will go like this. It'll start here, it'll come to here, and then it'll shoot out here. These will still run. In what exact order, I'm not sure, but I know once you come here, it's gonna fire out up here, okay? So what that means is we no longer want this running on the client. We, we don't need it to. We want it to run on the server. So we'll delete it from here. And don't forget to connect this back up. You have a whole bunch of problems. All right. And then all I did was get the move forward from over here, drag it, and we want to set it. Okay, now you can see an obvious problem here. We're wanting this data from the move forward, right? But you only have a target here and it's saying, nah, I don't want to do that. What we have to do is we have to tell the original thing we made up here, this, this custom event, to accept a float, all right? This is where the magic happens. Click your plus over here. All right, now you can see where we're going with this. Drop it down, hit float. All right, now it's going to accept floats. We want to name it something different. You can name it uh, move forward. Uh, I'm going to say move forward. And the reason I do that, I don't like to name everything with the same name. If you were doing this in C++, you wouldn't do it because it would, it would, you can't have variables of the same name. So I just name it slightly different. And it, it, keep, it makes things less confusing. So as you can see, so here's how the signal is gonna go. It's gonna come out of the access value into move four, boom. And then it's gonna come, shoot, it's gonna come right out of here into this block. And then it's gonna come out of here and it's gonna move into your move forward. All right, so now that variable is replicated and i'm sure i've forgotten something but compile save save all and let's see where we're at press play oh look at that okay cool so hot here let me talk about how i'm moving around these windows if you press play you you start off on the uh the left one here if you press shift f1 you get your mouse back and then your Windows key, left arrow, snap it over there, and then click the other one. It'll go into the right one. And then I'll just go over on my client. And now look at that. See, now you can see my move forward, but watch this. Uh, if you can, left and right still hasn't been set to replicate. And we can't move left or right. We can move forward and backwards, you're seeing it. 
All right, so escape out of there. Let's fix that. All right. All right, see, I, you, even I get lost. Back to over here. Okay. So we had started over here. We had the move right. So remember our steps. Um, we have to get this thing to accept a float. So you press the plus over here. Got a float. Uh, what are name it whatever you want so move R I I don't know move right and remember we don't want to set it on the client you want to set it on the server okay so you're like uh oh what how do I get it here how do I get okay you just drag off here and type move right to server remember this if you if you don't create one of these, you're not going to have one of these. All right, so we set it up so that it's accepting our move right. For some reason, the value is not updated there. I don't know why, but that's fine. We'll just plug it in here. See what happens if I do that. See? Okay, this is good this happened, actually, because you'll bang your head against the wall trying to figure out this sometimes. Right-click it. Uh, let's see if this will fix it. Refresh node. There it goes. So you notice right away I had noticed that move right move rye wasn't popping up and when i connected it and compiled it it gave me a problem that should fix it um compile this again see now it likes this again but anyway don't forget to connect it up there that's just uh i don't know if you'd call it a bug but anyway take your move right click it move it over here set and now we're setting it on the server. There's an important part I want to bring up here. If you don't, you got to pretend things run on the server and things run on the client are on completely different islands or else this concept won't make sense because you might go, uh, you know, why, why do I have to send it through like this? Why couldn't I get my, um, Let's see, move right here. Why couldn't I have just got my move right and gotten it and then, you know, done something like this, connected it up? Well, what you're don't it just won't work. Nothing will happen. You won't get an error or anything. It's just nothing's happening because this value at this point doesn't exist on the server. Uh, with Unreal, with using blueprints, you actually have to send the value through the custom event before it'll be properly replicated. And then in some cases, you will have to cast it to all the clients for it to rep replicate uh, properly. And how you would do that is you would make another custom event. I'll just do it real quick. Uh, we'll just name it custom event zero. And over here, instead of run on server, you would do a multicast, click it to reliable and then you would do the same setup again. You would make another variable and you would send. So watch this. So you do custom event zero. Okay. Do you see what's happening? And then it would send it to here. Um, but under which circumstances you need to cast it, I just do a, uh, I, I just see if it needs it or not. And we'll get further along and you'll see, oh, okay, this is the time we need to do that. And this is the time we don't. So ignore that for now. I always hate it when people do that in tutorials, but in case you're kind of there already messing with it, that's how you would do it. Anyway, let's double check what we've done. Make sure it's working properly. Okay, and look at that. So we got our left, we have our right. Okay, I'm, that's the server moving around. Let's go over to the client. We're getting the client too. Now, whenever you're doing multiplayer testing, you need to, this would be, this setup right here would be the same as if you're playing, I don't know, like Minecraft or something. And somebody's hosting uh, as the server, they're playing the map and other people join them. Okay, that would be this scenario. But let's say you're playing like a massively multiplayer game. It's gonna have a dedicated server, which means that nobody's actually playing on the server. And to simulate this, Unreal has different ways to simulate this. You just click this drop down right here. Click run as dedicated server. And I hope that, yep. And now both of these will be clients. Nobody will be the server. All 
Okay. And if everything still works right, shift F1, come over here. Then you know you've done your job properly. All right, that's it for now. I'll show you guys more on multiplayer replication. We'll get into the details. We're going to try to basically mimic that whole game in the demo, whether it be exactly first person or third person, I'm not sure yet, but I want to make sure we get the basics of replication down. And then I obviously I'll explain more uh, about the words I'm using, such as class, uh, class and versus blueprint and how they're the same and how th some things are different and um, other things like that. But that's it for now.